Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss the mechanism, side effects, and clinical use of pregabalin. What is pregabalin? Pregabalin is one of the drug which can be used in the various types of clinical conditions. This drug can be used in the treatment of neuropathic pain. This condition is caused by an excessive neuronal activity or neuronal damage. For example, the diabetic patients they can develop a neuropathy because of the excessive levels of glucose. So in such conditions, the pregabalin can be used. And this drug can also be used in the treatment of fibromyalgia as an analgesic and in the post herpetic neuralgia. After the herpes infection, what are the neuronal pain that is going to be observed because of the viral damage? In all these three conditions, the pregabalin can be used as an analgesic. And this drug can also be used in the treatment of focal seizures, that is, a partial seizures. So it can be used as an anticonvulsant. In this way, pregabalin is an analgesic as well as an anticonvulsant. And apart from these clinical uses, it can also be used as an off label purpose in the treatment of generalized anxiety disorder. Whatever may be the clinical uses, you can see that the pregabalin is going to act in all these clinical settings by inhibition of the neuronal activity. So pregabalin is one of the drugs which reduces the neuronal transmission, thereby decrease the nociception that is a pain signaling, as well as it can also decrease the excessive neuronal activity, thereby it can show anticonvulsant action. But how this pregabalin acts? So pregabalin, within the name you can observe the GABA as the infix. So what is the relation of this pregabalin to the GABA receptors? Whether this pregabalin is acting on the GABA receptors? We can also find another related drug which is again having the term GABA. So that is a GABA pentin. Now what is the activity of this GABA pentin on the GABA receptors? Even both of these drugs, pregabalin and GABA pentin are having the term GABA within their names. But they are not acting on the GABA receptors. These two drugs are structurally related to the GABA but they are not having any action on the GABA receptors. So now let us see the structure of pregabalin. So before that, let us see the structure of the GABA. So this is the structure of the GABA, which is a butyric acid. So this is the alpha position, beta position and gamma position. So at the gamma position, we can observe an amino group. So this is a gamma amino butyric acid, which is commonly known as GABA. Now let us see the structure of pregabalin. So this is the structure of pregabalin. And here you can observe that the straight chain is just similar to the structure of the GABA. So pregabalin is the derivative of the GABA. And it is having one of the side chain. What is this side chain? So this is nothing but the isobutyl side chain is going to be attached at the beta portion to the GABA. So pregabalin is the isobutyl derivative of the GABA. In this way, pregabalin is structurally related to the GABA. Then how pregabalin acts? And we have seen that even the pregabalin is structurally related to the GABA, but it is not acting on the GABA receptors. So it is not acting on the GABA A receptors or GABA B receptors and even it is not going to inhibit the uptake of the GABA or it is going to in inhibit the metabolism of the GABA. In this way, this drug is having no action that is related to the GABA. Then how this drug acts? Pregabalin acts on the presynaptic ion channels, particularly the calcium channels. It is going to acting on a modulatory site at the calcium channels. Thereby, it is going to inhibit the neurotransmitter release. In this way, pregabalin can inhibit the release of the so many types of neurotransmitters. It can affect the release of glutamate, substance P, dopamine, norepinephrine. All these are the important excitatory mediators which may produce the neuronal excitation. In this way, pregabalin can inhibit the neuronal excitation by inhibition of the neurotransmitter release. Let us see how it is possible. Suppose this is a presynaptic neuron and neuronal transmission can take place from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron by release of the neurotransmitters. Now within the presynaptic neuron, the neurotransmitters are stored into the storage vesicles and these neurotransmitters can be released which is controlled by the voltage gated calcium channels which are present on the presynaptic nerve terminals. So these ion channels are what we call the voltage gated calcium channels because these are going to be opened based on the voltage of the presynaptic neurons. Similarly, the postsynaptic neurons can be equipped with a few of the receptors. For example, NMDA receptors, which are the receptors for the glutamate, which produce a excitatory postsynaptic potential. 
and N the receptors are the AMP receptors which are again produced in the first excitatory post synaptic potential. So these two receptors when they are going to be activated by the glutamate they can produce the excitatory response within the post synaptic neuron. Now whenever the impulse is going to reach to the presynaptic neuron these voltage gated calcium channels are going to be activated. Now the calcium can enter through the voltage gated calcium channels and it can produce a depolarization of the presynaptic neurons. Once the presynaptic neurons are depolarized, they promote the release of the neurotransmitter from the storage vesicles. Now these uh, neurotransmitters are going to acting on the postsynaptic receptors, thereby they produce a depolarization or excitation within the postsynaptic neuron. In this way, the neurotransmitters can be released from the presynaptic neuron, which is stimulated by voltage-gated calcium channels. But what happens in the epilepsy and neuropathic pain? Whenever the more number of impulses are going to reach to the presynaptic neuron, then this presynaptic neuron will be in a hyper excited state. So that's what we call the hyper excited presynaptic neuron. And this can result in the activation of the calcium channels, that is the voltage gated calcium channels, which are open, resulting in the more release of the neurotransmitters. In this way, as the impulses are going to reach to the presynaptic neuron, more neurotransmitters are released, leading to the abnormal postsynaptic neuronal excitation. So this may be observed as an excessive pain as well as increased epilepsy in the patients. Now let us see how this pregabalin acts. So this is a presynaptic neuron and this is a postsynaptic neuron. Within the presynaptic neuron voltage gated calcium channels are important for release of the neurotransmitters. But these ion channels are having a modulatory site and this site is called alpha 2 delta site. So this site is going to modulate the entry of the calcium through the voltage gated calcium channels. Now when we use the pregabalin, this, this pregabalin can bind to this alpha 2 delta site on this voltage gated calcium channels and it can modulate these channels so that these channels are going to be inactivated. Now in this condition whenever an impulse is going to reach to the presynaptic neuron, it cannot uh, promote the entry of the calcium because the uh, calcium channels are closed so that the calcium is not entering into the presynaptic neuron and neurotransmitters are not released. In this way, pregabalin can inhibit the release of the neurotransmitters, so it can inhibit the postsynaptic neuronal excitation. That's why pregabalin is a modulator on the voltage-gated calcium channels, thereby it can decrease the neuronal response. In this way, pregabalin can decrease the nociception as well as the epileptic conditions. Now, let us the side effects of pregabalin. As this drug is going to acting on the central nervous system, the main side effects are related to the CNS. So, it can produce the drowsiness, dizziness, and somnolence. All these are the central side effects produced by the pregabalin. So, that's why whenever the pregabalin is given, it should not be given along with the CNS depressants, which increase the drowsiness and dizziness in the patients. Similarly, other side effects include the dry mouth, constipation and headache commonly seen with the pregabalin. And another important side effect is the hypersensitive reactions. In few of the patients, pregabalin can produce some skin allergy. And this drug can also promote the weight gain whenever this drug is used for a long term period. How it is given? The pregabalin is given in the different doses forms. For example, it can be given as a capsule form and it can also be given as a solution form. And this drug is also available as a tablet, but this is a CR tablet. The CR indicates is the controlled release tablet. These controlled release tablets will release the drug in a controlled way or in an extended way such that the drug is going to be slowly released from the doses form and uh, it is available for a longer period. It is very important that the CR tablet should not be broken into the fragments before the administration. Because these CR tablets can be prepared in many of the ways. One of the procedures is to produce a tablet which is going to be coated with a polymer and this polymer results in the release of the drug in a controlled way. So if we break the tablet, this polymer coating is going to be broken which will result in the immediate release of the drug so the controlled release cannot be achieved. And sometimes we can have a tablet and within the tablet we can have another core which is again coated with a polymer. And again if we break the tablet this polymer coating is going to be disturbed which results in the 
loss of control release. Now let us see the dose of pregabalin. The dose depends on the clinical use as well as the dosage form. For example, when it is given as a capsule, the different types of dose are available from the 25 to the 300 mg. And when it is given as a solution, it is available at a strength of 20 mg per ml. And in case of CR tablets, it is available at the three strengths. For example, CR tablets are available at 82.5 mg, 165 mg and 330 mg. You can see the doubling of the dose 82.5, 165 and 330 mg of the pregabalin. And here the CR tablet should not be considered as the alternatives for the capsules and solution because the release pattern of the drug is different from the immediate release preparations and the CR tablets. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions is a peripheral edema. Pregabalin can increase the edemic conditions. So whenever the patient is having the peripheral edema, this drug can increase the further cardiac workload, which can increase the heart failure in the patients. Whenever the patient is having the peripheral edema, this drug should be carefully given. Similarly, another precaution is the hypersensitivity. As we have already discussed, the pregabalin can produce few of the skin reactions and allergic reactions. So whenever this drug is going to be given, it produces hypersensitive reactions resulting in the angioedema. In some of the patients, we can observe the swelling of the tongue, lips, face, neck. All these are because of the hypersensitive reactions. Similarly, another precaution of this drug is the weight gain. Since this drug is going to promote the weight, particularly when this drug is used for a long term period, the weight gain should be thoroughly monitored when this drug is used for a longer period. And another one is the central side effects. All we have seen that pregabalin is going to produce a central side effects. So this drug can increase the dizziness in the patients. Therefore, whenever the patient is having some central disorders like the dizziness or whenever the patient is going to take the other drugs which are going to produce a dizziness and drowsiness in the patient, then the pregabalin should be carefully given. For example, alcohol can produce some drowsiness which may interact with the pregabalin to produce the more drowsiness and dizziness in the patient. So these are the important precautions of the pregabalin and pregabalin is one of the GABA derivative but it is not acting on the GABA receptors. It acts by modulating the voltage gated calcium channels on the presynaptic neurons by binding to the alpha 2 delta site. By this modulatory action it can decrease the release of the neurotransmitters like the glutamate, norepinephrine, dopamine, substance P. By all of these it can decrease the nociception as well as the neuronal excitation. So that's about the pregabalin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.